Hi, greetings everybody. Well, it's time for Supernatural Summer 2022, and this month we're going to be taking a look at Season 2 of Supernatural. So let's kick, so let's kick things off with, this, with the first episode of Season 2, In My Time of Dying. In the Impala, the possessed truck driver climbs out of his truck and walks over to the Impala. Sam wakes up just in, inside, just as the possessed man pulls the door right off the car. Get back, says Sam, or I'll kill you, I swear to God. You won't, the demon responds. You're saving that bullet for someone else. Sam pulls back the hammer. You want to bet? The demon smiles, but a couple of seconds later, it leaves the man's body. Sam tries to talk to John, but he doesn't answer. He then calls Dean, but he doesn't respond either. Paramedics arrive in a helicopter to bring them to hospital. Sam wants to know if Dean and John are okay, but the paramedic tells him he has to stay still. He asks if they're even alive. In the hospital, Dean wakes up. He gets out of bed and walks through the hallway. He calls Sam and John, but there's no answer. The hospital seems to be deserted. He walks downstairs to where a nurse is sitting on a desk. He tries to talk to her, but she appears to not even see him. He snaps his fingers in front of her face, but she does nothing. He runs back down the hall to his room and sees his own body lying on the bed still, attached to many tubes and machines. In Dean's hospital room, Dean is standing out inside his room. Sam comes in, and Dean, and Dean tries to talk to him. Sam doesn't answer him. He just mutters, oh no, and walks over Dean's body on the bed. Dean continues to try and talk to him, asking how his dad is, but Sam doesn't know he's there. Just then, the doctor walks in and tells Sam that John is awake and can go see him if he wants. Sam asks about Dean, and the doctor replies that he has suffered many injuries, but it's the head trauma he's worried about. He says he won't know his full condition until he wakes up, and then adds, if he wakes up. Sam starts to get upset, but the doctor replies that even though Dean is fighting very hard, he has to be realistic about his expectations. In John's hospital room, John gives Sam his insurance and tells him to give it to the hospital. Sam finds the name on the card amusing. John asks about Dean, but apparently Sam's already told him everything the doctor said. Sam says that it doesn't matter if the hospital can't do anything, they will find someone to help Dean. John agrees that they'll look for someone, but he doesn't know if they'll find anything. Sam reminds him about the faith here before, and John answers that it was one in a million. It's also checked under every stone, though. A second later, John asks where the cult is. Sam's disgusted. Your son is dying and worried about the cult? He snaps. John replies that they are hunting this demon and they need the gun. Sam says it's in the trunk of the Impala. John tells him that he has to clean out the trunk before somebody else finds their stuff. Sam replies that he's already called Bobby. He's going to tow the Impala back to his place. John sends him to get the cold and bring it back. He also gives him a list of stuff he wants Bobby to pick up for him and tells Sam it's for protection. Before Sam leaves, he asks if John knows what the demon meant when he said he had plans for him and children like him. John says he doesn't. Dean's spirit is standing in the corner of the room. He says to himself that John is definitely hiding something. Mm-hmm. In Bobby's junkyard, Sam and Bobby take a look at the Impala and Bobby says there's no way they can fix it. Sam gets upset and says that if there's even one part of the car that's still working, it's good enough. It says they just can't give up. Bobby agrees, seeing that Sam is drawing a mental parallel between the car and Dean. Sam gives him the list of stuff John wanted, and when Sam tells him it's for protection against a demon, Bobby gives him a funny look. Sam demands he tell him what he knows. In Dean, back in Dean's room, John is sitting by his son's bed. Dean walks up behind and says, Come on, Dad. You gotta help me. I gotta get better. I gotta back in there. You haven't called a soul for help. Aren't you going to do anything? Aren't you going to say anything? I've done everything you ever asked for me. Everything. I've given everything I've ever had. You're not just going to sit there and watch me die? I mean, what kind of help? I mean, what kind of help, Father, are you? John just sits there. Suddenly, Dean hears something in the hall. In the hospital corridor, he goes, uh, he goes out and something white runs past him. John hasn't seen it. He runs down the hall after it and it goes into a woman's room. She's lying on the floor and gasping for air. She manages to say she can't breathe. Dean calls for help, but no one hears him. The woman dies. Uh oh. Excuse me. In John's room, Sam walks in and Dean tries to talk to him. Tell him there's something in the hospital and they have to hunt it. John starts to talk to Sam and notices that Sam is angry. Sam asks him if he thought he wouldn't find out. It turns out the stuff from Bobby. It turns out he found out from Bobby that the stuff John wanted wasn't for protection. It was for summoning the demon. He tells John he cares more about the demon than helping Dean. John gets mad as well. 
He tries to stop them, but they can't hear him. John tells Sam he's trying to help Dean. Sam asks him how revenge can help Dean. They continue to argue, and Dean gets so upset he manages to knock a glass of water off the table. Sam John stare at it in surprise. Suddenly, Dean starts to flicker, and he falls to his knees. Also, his knees. He's obviously in pain. In Dean's room, Dean's hard to stop, and they're trying to get him back. Sam watches from the door with tears in his eyes. Dean walks up behind him. He sees the same white shape in the hallway hovering over his body. He goes over and grabs the thing. Even though he's thrown away from it, it moves away from his body and his heart starts again. In the corridor, Dean, uh, Dean runs out into the hall looks for the white thing, but it's gone. He goes back and stands, stands next to Sam. Don't worry, Sam, he says. I don't go anywhere. I'm getting that thing before it gets me. He reflects that it's some sort of spear, and if he can grab it, he can kill it. Sam turns and almost looks right at Dean. Suddenly, Dean hears, hears a woman's voice yelling, Can't you see me? Why won't you look at me? He finds a girl on the stairs and asks her if she can see him. She says she can, and when he introduces himself, she says her name is Tessa. She asks him if she's dead. She shows him her room, where her body is lying on the bed and her mother is sitting beside her. She says it must be a dream. He says it's not and asks her if she's ever heard of an out-of-body experience. <clears throat> she asks him if he's some sort of new age guy, and he says, You see me with some crystals or listen to Yanni? It's actually a very old idea. He tells her he thinks it's going to happen to them, and if it is, it means that there are spirits of a body very close to death. She asks him if they're going to die, and he says no. In John's room, Sam was telling John that it felt as if Dean was there, just out of eyeshot or something. Yes, so that's possible, and John implies that anything's possible. Sam says there's one way they could find out and starts to leave. <clears throat> John tells him that he won't hunt the demon, not until he knows Dean's okay. In the corridor, Dean and Tessa are walking together. He says he's impressed with how well she's taking this. He says she's taking it better than, she, than he did. She tells him that she was freaked out at first, but now she knows whatever's going to happen will happen. It's fate. He tells her that's crap. He says that they always have a choice. They give a roll over and die or keep fighting. He's interrupted by the doctors running behind him. He runs after them comes to a room where the doctors are trying to save a woman. The white shape is over her again. It touches her on the face. Even though he tries to pull it away, it disappears and the woman dies. Sam goes into Dean's room, holding out a paper bag. He says to Dean that, when he, think, that he thinks he's around, and if he is, they're going to communicate. He pulls out a Ouija board and sits down on the floor. <clears throat> he asks Dean if he's there. Dean is skeptical, but he sits down too and puts his hand to the board. He moves to yes. They're both shocked. Dean spells out hunt on the board. Sam asks him if he's hunting and he moves to yes. Sam asks him if he knows what it is. Dean spells out reap on the board. Sam kisses Reaper and asks him if it's after him. He moves to yes. Sam says if it's there naturally, there's no way to stop it. Panicking, he says, there ha he says there has to be a way, and he goes to find his dad, but John's bed is empty. In the boiler room, John goes, John goes downstairs to the boiler room. He starts to draw a symbol on the floor in chalk. Sam goes back to Dean's room and tells him he has dad's journal. Dean thanks him for not giving up on him. Sam goes to the page of Reapers and they both read it. Dean suddenly leaves. In Tessa's room, Dean goes down the hall and comes to Tessa's room. It's empty except for her leaning on an empty bed, watching him. Hello, Dean, he sh she says. Dean tells her he figured out that she's a reaper, because reapers can alter human perception. He says they can make themselves appear however they want. She says she was running when he figured it out. Dean asks her how she made him see her body and her mother. She says she can make him see whatever she wants. He asks her why she's toying with him, and, says, and she says he didn't give her much choice, as he saw her true form and flipped out. She says this was the only way she could get him to talk to her. He asks what the hell she wants to talk about. She tells him that death is something to fear, and, and it's his time to go. In the boiler room, John is chanting in Latin. He performs a ritual to some of the yellow eyed demon. He finishes it and stands up, looking around. The demon comes, possessing a worker. John aims the colt at him. Two other possessed doctors come as well. The demon says he's surprised John summoned him, as he didn't take John as suicidal. He asks John if he thought he would. If he really thought he could trap him. John lowers in on Cox the gun and tells him he doesn't want to trap him this time. He wants to make a deal. Sam is talking to Dean in his room. He doesn't can find anything in the book and he doesn't know how to help him. 
He's also keep trying as long as he keep as long as he keeps fighting. He says Dean has to hold on. He can't go now. They were just starting to be brothers again. Dean is asking Tessa to make an exception for him. He tells her his family is in danger. He says they need him. She tells him that he's not the first soldier she's plucked from the field. She says they all say they can't leave. Victory hangs in the balance, but the fight goes on without them. Dean tells her his brother might die without him. She says maybe he will, and maybe he won't. There's nothing he can do about it. She says it's an honorable death, a warrior's death. He tells her there's no such thing as an honorable death. He says no, he's not going with her, no matter what she does. She tells him he was right. There's always a choice. She says he can't get back to his body, though. She says staying here will drive him mad, and he might even get violent. She asks him how he thinks angry spirits are born. They can't let go, and they can't move on. She tells him he is about to become the, the same thing he hunts. In the boiler room, John and the demon are still talking, neither of whom questions if this was a trick. John says he will give the demon the cold and the bullet, but he has to help Dean. The demon asks him if he knows the truth about the other children. John says yes, he's known for a while. He asks if the demon can bring back Dean or not. The demon replies he can't, but he knows someone who can. John says that before he gives him the gun, he want, he's going to want to make sure Dean's okay with his own two eyes. The demon says they don't have a deal yet. He still has something else. Something he wants as much as the gun. Maybe more. Tess is telling Dean that it's time to put the pain behind him. Dean asks her where he'll, Dean asks her where he'll go, but she says she can't give it away. She tells him it's time for him to choose. The light starts to flicker. Dean asks why she's doing that. She says it's not her. Suddenly, black smoke comes out of a vent, and it's towards her. She screams in anger that it can't do this, and it goes into her mouth. She turns around, and her eyes are yellow. Today's your lucky day, kid, she says, and puts her hand on Dean's forehead. Suddenly, in Dean's room, he wakes up, choking an intubation tube down his throat. Sam yells for help. In Dean's room, Dean is sitting up in bed. The doctor tells him that everything's healed. He says he has some kind of angel watching over him. Dean asks Sam what happened, and he doesn't remember anything, except he says, this pit in his stomach. He says something's wrong. John comes to the door and asks him how he feels. Sam starts to ask him where he was last night, and John replies he had some things to do. Sam asks if he went after the demon, and even though John says no, Sam says he doesn't believe him. Suddenly John asks, can we not fight? Sam looks shocked. Just as half the time he doesn't even know what they're fighting about. Sam asks him if he's all right. And John replies he's just a little tired. He asks him if he can get him some coffee. Sam leaves. John starts to talk to Dean, telling him about when he was a kid and how Dean used to tell John it was okay after he come back from a hunt. He says he's sorry. He says he shouldn't have had to say that. It should have been John saying that to him. He says he made Dean grow up too fast. He says he's so proud of Dean. Dean asks him if it's really him talking, and John says yes. Dean asks him why he's saying this stuff. John asks him to watch out for Sam, and Dean says he will. He says John is scaring him. John tells him not to be scared. He leans in and whispers something in Dean's ear. Then he leaves the room. In the corridor, John puts down the cold and says, Okay. Sam is walking down the hall. Suddenly sees his father lying on the floor in his room. He runs in and calls for help. The doctors try to get John back as his son's watch, but they can't. One calls, time of death. 10.41 a.m. Hmm. So let's take a look at some continuity surrounding this episode. This is the first appearance of Tessa. As Azazel previously appeared in Devil's Trap, Bobby Singer previously appeared in Devil's Trap, John Worcester previously appeared in Devil's Trap, the Drucker Demon previously appeared in Devil's Trap. This episode takes place immediately after the season one finale, Devil's Trap. This episode introduces the concept of demon deals a major element of the rest of the series. This episode shows that high-tier demons can possess reapers. The Apollo is severely damaged from the truck hitting it to the point that Bobby believes it is beyond repair. However, Dean later repairs it by bloodlust. Dean makes first mention of a hole in his stomach, and Death takes a holiday and learns that the hole was the result of not going with Tessa. In Season 4, we'll learn why Azazel wanted John's soul in hell. And now let's take a look at some trivia surrounding this episode. Jeffrey Dean Morgan is not credited as a guest star on the CW's official summary for this episode. This is the first episode of Frederick 
explain, or sorry, I mispronounced that, portraying Azazel. John uses the sigil of Azazel to summon the Elohite demon, suggesting that he knew all along what the demon's name was. Dean finds out in Sin City. Around the 19 minute mark, when Dina and Tessa are talking, a message comes over the intercom calling for Dr. Kripke, likely named after series creator Eric Kripke. Early episode hospital page for Michael Crawford 340 is heard. Michael Crawford is a teacher at the University of Kansas in Lawrence. He teaches Anthropology 340. The events of this episode mark the beginning of a series character arc for Dean, one which sends him spiraling to depression and self-loathing, making him into a much darker character. Azazel dismisses Dean as not much of a threat. Ironically, Dean will later kill him. When talking to him about the Reaper, Dean states that you can't kill death. Ironically, in Brother's Keeper, he would do exactly that. Dean makes a reference to the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze. Dean's memories of the events of this episode are restored by Tessa in Season 4's Death, death Takes a Holiday. And now finally, let's take a look at some errors. When the doctor is talking to Sam about his brother's condition at the start, as the camera turns to Dean's body, which, where he is meant to be in a coma, you can see Jensen closing his eyes from where he was watching. The doctor calls the, the time of death for John Winchester at 10.41 a.m., but the time of the heart rate monitor says 9.06. Hmm, odd. So at the beginning of season two, this episode is just really damn impressive and also a little scary at times, so yeah. Especially with the true form of the Reaper, because man, that thing is scary looking. <laughs> so overall, I give in my time of dying. Mm, four Impalas out of five. Well, anyway, tune in a bit as we take the next episode. Everybody loves a clown. So until then, carry on, my wayward sons and daughters.